In this video, we'll learn how to find the angle between a line and a plane. Now, on the right-hand side here, we've drawn a plane on which we've added a couple of things. We can see that in blue we have a line, which is clearly at an angle to that plane. And we can see that that line has a direction vector u, which we've added to it here in red. And we can also see that the plane has a normal, which we've called n, and drawn in pink here. So that's, I want to say, the setup that we're going to work with. Now, what we're trying to find, and what we're going to learn how to find, is the angle between the line and the plane, which we'll call theta. And I'm just drawing there on the graph, or on the diagram. Now, the approach to finding theta isn't to calculate it directly. The idea is going to be to find the other internal angle, which I'm calling alpha, to this right angle triangle, which I'm somewhat highlighting here. Now we can see that we have that right angle triangle. And we can also see that alpha, of course, also appears here. Now, alpha and theta are related, since it's a right angle triangle, by the following formula. Theta will equal to 90 minus alpha. This means that so long as we can find alpha, well, we can definitely calculate theta. And alpha, if you look carefully at this diagram, alpha is simply the angle between the two vectors u and n. And we know how to calculate the angle between two vectors. In fact, we've seen the formula for that previously. And we'll just remind us ourselves of that formula now. We know that alpha is equal to arc cos of the absolute value of u dot n over the product of the magnitudes of the vectors u and n. And notice that I'm taking the absolute value here. The reason for that is to make sure that I'm obtaining the acute angle between the two vectors and not the obtuse angle. So I'll just put a cross around that one. That's why we're taking the absolute value here. Now, essentially what we found so far is a formula to find the angle alpha between the vectors u and n. And using this first thing we wrote at the top here, the fact that theta equals to 90 minus alpha, we're done. We have a formula for theta. We can go ahead and write theta equals to 90 minus arc cos, or inverse cos, of the absolute value of u dot n over the product of their respective magnitudes. And there, there we have it. That's a formula for the angle theta, which I'm kind of boxing here. And now, since alpha and theta are complementary angles, we can go one step further, and I want to say simplify this formula. We can go ahead and say that theta is equal to arc sine of that same thing, the absolute value of u dot n over the product of the magnitudes of u and n. And there we go. That is the formula to find the angle between a line and a plane. Now let's go right ahead and see how we use this formula with an example. We're asked to find the angle between the plane defined by 3x minus 2y plus 4z equals to 5 and the line defined by r equals to the position vector negative 3, 5, 7 plus lambda, the parameter, times the direction vector 2, 2, 4. Well, to answer this, to find the angle, which we'll call theta, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have two things. One, the normal to the plane, or a normal to the plane, I should say. And two, we need the direction vector of the line. Well, looking at the question here, we definitely have the direction vector of the line. It's 2, 2, 4. So I'll go ahead and call that u. And now we need the normal to the plane. And as we usually do, we use the coefficients of the equation of the plane to define the normal. So we see we have 3, negative 2, and 4. So we can go right ahead and say normal to the plane and define it as n 
equals to the vector 3, negative 2, and 4. And there we go, we now have n. u, remember, the direction vector of the line we underlined previously was 2, 2, 4. And now we can go ahead and state that the angle between the line and the plane, theta, is equal to arc sine, or inverse sine, of the absolute value of u dot n over the product of their respective magnitudes. Now, let's go ahead, let's calculate u dot n. So u dot n should equal to 2 times 3 plus 2 times negative 2 plus 4 times 4. That leads us to 6 minus 4 plus 16, which leads us to u dot n equals to 18. Now we need the magnitudes of u and n. So we know that u has a magnitude of 2 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared, square root of all that, leading us to 4 plus 4 plus 16, and that's equal to the square root of 24, which of course we can write as 2 root 6. So that's the magnitude of u. n has a magnitude of, let's see, we have n is 3, negative 2, 4, so that's 3 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 4 squared, and we take the square root of all of that, leading us to 9 plus 4 plus 16 under a square root, and that is root of 29. We now have both magnitudes as well as the value of the dot product, so we can go ahead and we can now state that theta equals to arc sine of the absolute value of 18 over 2 root 6 times root 29. That in turn leads us to arc sine of 9 over root 6 times root 29. Notice that we've gotten rid of the absolute value given that 18 over 2 root 6 times root 29 will of course be positive. And this in turn leads us to arc sine of 9 over 174 under a square root. Finally, using our calculator and rounding to three significant figures, we find that theta equals to 43.0 degrees. And there we have it. We've just calculated the angle between the line and the plane. And that's how it's done.